Dear Regina, sailing family and friends, in my very first chapter, in the introduction, I talked about lightning strike. And I talked about how you can prevent the boat from sinking by installing a um, lightning protection. But I also said that the electronics might not uh, work, so I can't repair those. But the compass can get an unknown deviation. So it's a very good habit uh, to each time you shoot the, the sun, that you also do a compass check. And by the way, that's also part of the Yacht Master Ocean exam. So I will show you how to check the deviation of your compass. And by this, you will get more and more and more deviations. And soon you have a readily full, complete deviation table. So let's look at the compass check. One of my friends here who charted in the Caribbean sent me this photo. I think it's really funny. It, it was stuck under the compass on the charter boat and it says, Warning! Due to possible errors, always use GPS or hand-bearing compass. So they don't even trust their own compass. Why? It's because deviation and variation. And especially in Caribbean, we have a lot of variation at least uh, as well. So this is all old news, so to speak coming from um, the Yacht Master uh, or the Offshore Yacht Master theory course or the Coastal Skipper. So let me just rehearse a little bit from there and then uh, after this repetition we will see how easy it is to check your compass by means of uh, celestial navigation. So to repeat we have some variation and that has to do with the Earth and that changes over time and where you are. So here we have a picture of at least half the Earth, and the green lines, these are isogones. So isogones are lines with, uh, the same, with the same variation. So the green lines, we have no variation at all. The red lines, the further you get away from the green lines, the more you get easterly deviation, uh, variation, sorry, and from the green lines, the more you go into the blue direction, then you increase the uh, variation there. And it varies over uh, time as well. So first of all you have to check where you are and then when you are. Well when is obvious. It's in 2020 uh, as this video is done now. And we can see that through Europe we have a green line so the variation is very small here. But you can see the Caribbean has some variation which is much much higher maybe 14, 15 degrees and uh, on the middle of the Atlantic even more. That's where the maximum is. But it hasn't always been that. So just let me flip back some hundred years and see how it looked then. So this is how it looked hundred years ago. And you can see that the green line almost went through the Caribbean and we had quite a lot westerly deviation. And I can still remember in my youth that uh, I always had to calculate with uh, variation in the 1970s and they have declined more and more and the green big dot there where all the blue and red line uh, connect that is the magnetic north pole. So comparing back to how it is today you can see that the north pole is out of the picture uh, the magnetic no north pole and we, we have very little um, variation. This is how it looked before. And if we zoom it in, we can see here in Europe that the zero uh, isogone is actually going uh, approximately through Dunkirk in France and then across the North Sea. And in uh, the UK, we have maybe two degrees west. And in Scandinavia, we have some three, four degrees east. So that's the variation that has to do with the year and where you are sailing. And then we have the deviation. And I found this really nice picture somewhere to explain the deviation because that has to do with the magnetic items, the uh, iron that you have on board. For instance, your engine. So um, to explain why this is 
dependent on your depending on your heading I have this nice little picture so the left boat you can see that the engine is uh, this the gray square one is pointing to south so the uh, compass on board is pointing nicely to north as it should the top boat uh, is now on an easterly course and you can see how the needle is being diverted to point towards west and the right boat you have again the boat on a southerly course and what is again is that you don't have any deviation because the needle nicely points to north and on the last boat on the bottom it is having a westerly course and the compass needle is again pulled towards the engine so it is showing more to east than it really should. So we know about variation, we know about deviation and the variation is known because that is printed on the chart but the, the deviation that is something that we don't know that we have to check and it's a nice nice routine so every time you do a celestial navigation you do a sun shot then you can always check the compass at the same time and I'll show you how it's really easy so let's assume that you are on a nice little course uh, having a course of 70 degrees compass here as you can see the boat is sailing and um, the Sun let's say it's in the afternoon the Sun has an azimuth of 250 degrees that means that the Sun is pointing towards 215 degrees how do we know that well that's a spin-off out of our astro calculation so when we do our celestial navigation and sight reduction we get the azimuth is one of the answers and that azimuth as a routine should be used to be check the comp to check the compass so this is how you do you have your nice steering compass and which you might not have been aware of is that it has a needle in the middle and that needle in the middle is to be uh, used for uh, celestial checking of the compass which every compass really should have so we have the azimuth showing into this direction for instance on this picture and it gives a shadow on the opposite side so here we can read the shadow as um, being 30 degrees and it's really easy to to see this shadow especially when the Sun is a bit lower and the nice thing is it's irrespectively um, showing a nice clear picture um, irrespective of the of the uh, rolling of the boat so the boat might be rolling you don't be have to be on a very steady course because the compass is steady and by uh, that also the shadow so what you now do is that you compare this shadow which you can read off with the azimuth minus 180 degrees because the azimuth is showing towards the Sun and the shadow is showing away from the Sun so what you do is that for instance you have 215 degrees as a spin-off from the astro calculation so you know the azimuth you deduct 180 degrees to uh, get the shadow the direction of the shadow so the reciprocal is 35 degrees here and that is the shadow we should expect if we had no errors so the azimuth suggests that we would have a should have a shadow of 35 degrees now we only have a shadow of 30 degrees so comparing these two figures that is the combined error so we have five degrees as a combined error and that consists of variation and deviation and since we know the variation because that's printed on the chart we can then um, very easily figure out what our deviation is on this course so remember the deviation that we are now figuring out is only valid uh, on these 70 degrees that we have as a course so this computer deviation is valid for 70 degrees so what you do you take another deviation at another time of uh, the day or you have another course or you just do this as a, on a, as a regular practice and you fill in a spreadsheet and soon enough you have a deviation table for all 360 degrees as the course and never mind if you have a dodger or a hard top or something which is on the way it which is in the way because some times you can take the deviation in the morning and sometimes you can figure out it in the afternoon so uh, by this you should really be able to get the deviation at all uh, directions
So the next slide is coming from my Yacht Master Offshore course. You might remember it if you have done the course uh, with me before. That is how you get from true to compass. So from true, you take the variation to get the magnetic course, and then you use the deviation to get to the compass course. And the saying goes that true virgins make dull companions, which I can't really um, comment, but it is a way to remember that true and then V for variation in virgins, make for magnetic, dull for deviation, and companions for the compass course. And the figures we know is the true, because the azimut, okay, minus 180 degrees to get the shadow, is a true course that we uh, get from the site reduction table. And the magnetic is known from the chart, as I mentioned, and the shadow of the, uh, on the compass, that is what we compare with. And then you just have to remember um, that this is the deviation we are missing, and what you use is the saying error west, compass best, error east, compass least. So when you, this is all Yachtmaster uh, coastal knowledge, it's just an issue that now uh, we don't have the deviation, but all the other uh, figures, so it's very easy to calculate that. So we will do that in a couple of um, uh, exercises and you will see how easy it is. And it's fun. Now let's look at some boats. Here we have a Halbach Rossi 54. And uh, they built these boats until 2012. And see how nicely the compass is placed in the middle there, readily uh, visible from all many, many angles, and uh, can very well be used to check the compass, and it's an ocean-going boat. Now, in 2012, they introduced the Halbach Rossi 55. And this is how the 55 looks. It looks like an airplane cockpit. It's very sexy, very nice, great for coastal sailing. Uh, as long as you have power and everything is working, no, no lightning strike with your plotter. The compass is above the companionway, very far away, very difficult to see, and it's no way that you can uh, deviate this by means of the sun, unfortunately. The same goes here with the Halbach Rossi 40. This is our own 40 on the Atlantic, where we had some homeschooling with my kids on the way to the Caribbean. The compass was very nice and visible uh, at the pedestal, you could steer along it um, from the uh, from the helm, and also the shadow could be easily uh, read. The next boat in 2020, the 40 was replaced um, with the Halbach Rossi 40C. You see, the compass has gone. There's no compass anymore. It's a lot of um, knobs and uh, fancy stuff there, which looks really sexy. But the compass is the unlit uh, piece of uh, instrument to the very left. You see, they don't even have a light in it, it seems. It's really small and it's condemned to be a backup system and I don't know how you should do when deviating it on the ocean. Now there is one little tip that I got from Tom Cunliffe how you can deviate it. You, you, some of you are old enough to remember the CDs um, and if you have an old CD case you could make this little um, uh, Petrus. So you cut out from an old chart which you don't need anymore the compass rose uh, because that fits nicely into the CD case and uh, then you put a little stick. The thinner the better. I think this is a bit thick and I, I know Tom, Tom thinks that as well. It's a matchstick really. But if you have a toothpick you can drill a hole in the middle and put it in there and then you, what you have to do is that you have to hold the CD case in the direction of the heading and then you can read off uh, your shadow here. The disadvantage is here clearly that the shadow will uh, flip her to and throw and it will be very difficult to read off that one uh, when the boat is moving uh, in, the, in the swell. Uh, not comparable with a nice stable compass which is always horizontal and it's always keeping its own uh, course irrespectively of um, uh, how the movement of the boat is. So this is a difficult uh, workaround if you don't happen to have a nice seagoing uh, compass at the pedestal. So how do you do this now? Well, one way of doing it is using the azimut from the astro calculations like we did, but there is another two great possibilities to do and check your compass. Uh, it's morning and evening. 
and that is when you do the sunrise and uh, sunset checks so if you um, have a dodger it's good to check the uh, sun uh, rise on a westerly course and the sunset on an easterly course and the interesting thing is because of the uh, refraction issue um, the picture here which I have uh, to the left where the Sun is half a diameter above the uh, horizon that is actually sunset so uh, you think you see the Sun but that's because you can look around the corner so to speak and, uh, uh, behind the the horizon so when the Sun is half a diameter above the horizon that's when it's setting or when it's rising so in the Reed's Almanac you have this great little table I've uh, zoomed it in here and that is showing when the Sun is rising and setting depending on your latitude and the declination so we only need to do this by one degree accuracy because you don't deviate your compass to a better de uh, accuracy than one degree so you need to know your declination the declination uh, is easily found in the daily uh, pages or roughly also in the Reed's Almanac as I mentioned in an earlier uh, video cast. Then you check your latitude so if we for instance have a um, any latitude and the declination is zero what does declination mean zero for the Sun? Well that means that it is exactly going along the equator which is by the way exactly the same route as the first point of Aries is doing when does it do that? Well, 21st of March and 21st of September. So let's say we have some um, summer months, the summer is uh, approaching, you have a rising declination, maybe here declination of, let's say as an example, 5 degrees, and you are on a latitude of 30 degrees yourself, then the sun is um, rising and setting at 84.2 degrees. So you can do this um, uh, or you use the uh, compass check every sun site uh, doing, using the estimate. Okay, let's do some uh, nice little easy exercises. And uh, when you've done that, we are actually through with the whole astro calculation. And if you followed me until now, I'm, I'm very impressed. Uh, the idea is that you are ready for the exam with the astro calculations uh, in due course. So that's very nice.